trying to deal with secure download of real estate information that put me in like a, a nested do loop. They, they would ask for a code and this is all in the same email account. So I go, I close that, that email go to get the code. And when I went back to try to Finally. open the email again, it was gone. And it just kept going round and round. Mm -hmm. And um, finally dealt with it by sending the information as a text message and so forth. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's life in the <laughs> world of technology. Hmm. It's never easy. Looks like Bob's joining us, so. <laughs> and didn't meet crisis. Is we have a double Bob. <laughs> Bob, Bob. Bob. We have another Bob, one. Bob, 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 Bob. This is disintegrating. Oh, and well, I clicked on the wrong click here and got last week's recording. <laughs> what was going on while I was on YouTube? Oh, good times. Here I am. Yay. Here she is. Here I am. Good, good morning, morning, Jean. Jean. Oh, good morning, Bob. Where are you? Right down there. Right down there. <laughs> you know, you is the difference. Can you mute? The, what is the difference between modem and a router? Mute. Good question. Uh, Stephen probably would be able to define it better than I can. Um, <laughs> And thankfully, they are built in together most times um, now. So that's great. Um, so All right. the, the bottom line question is, we have been renting a modem from Verizon. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, maybe it was here. You could buy your own and not have to rent it. Mm hmm. And I went online and chatted with a very nice person. They said, yes, I could buy their modem for $399.99. The one I have is several years old, and I, I couldn't just buy that. Mm. It's probably six years old. Mm -hmm. And... Who knows how much life it has in it anyway. Mm -hmm. So is I, there any problem just going out to someplace and buying a modem? I, I've i always purchased my router slash modem from Verizon or Comcast versus renting because it's cheaper over the long run. Um, and like you said, I've had mine for years, so there's no reason to upgrade unless you know there's some new thing that you know like anything they stop connecting with um figured it would take almost three years to pay for itself but mm -hmm. we've had this one six and it's more than paid for itself <laughs> i've had mine for four or five years so yeah like you and i don't see any reason to replace it anytime soon um is that a reasonable price? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I would say uh, party A or party B would like to speak to that. <laughs> I, I, I went. Yeah. I went to. Uh, I went to uh, Best Buy. And probably paid no more than a hundred dollars for mine, and it was. It said right on the box that it was designed to work with Comcast. I assume they have the same thing to work with Verizon. I've had it for probably four or five years and I've had no problems with it. But mm -hmm. that's 
a far cry from three hundred dollars from Verizon themselves. Excuse me, three ninety nine and ninety nine <laughs> cents. Uh, Four hundred. Okay, that's an even farther cry from Verizon. Yeah, I would I'm, agree. Yeah. yeah, they want you to buy theirs, which, yeah, they want to make you do this new and expensive one. Um, the one I have is this one, which works great. It's half the price um but yeah if you go to best buy they'll have discounts and things just say i want it to be verizon or whatever um okay yeah i walked in i walked in and asked one of the employees for an authority on routers and he says i can help you of course he could and i told him i said i want a router that works with comcast and he walked right over to the router section and picked up one and said, here you are. And uh, it said right on the box that it was uh, for a Comcast uh, system. And I think it was a Doxis 3.0, which was the newest at the time. I, I saw recently that uh, somebody has brought out a Doxis 4.0, which is the operating system compatibility system uh but i i paid like a hundred dollars maybe less than that mm -hmm. i i did the same thing with comcast but i i talked to comcast and they they said you can go buy your own but make sure it's compatible with phone as well as everything else um because we have comcast for our landline um, and I didn't pay, I, I know I didn't pay more than 150 or so for the whole thing. It's a motor, it's a Motorola. Yeah. Mine is too. Seems to work. Actually, actually it's not Motorola anymore. It's Aris. Okay. Well, whatever. <laughs> uh, you, I went to, I went to the Comcast website and did a search for compatible modems mm -hmm. and there's a whole list of them. So you, uh, you might want to try that with Verizon too. Uh, go to their website and or just do a Google search for uh, third party modems that are compatible with Verizon. Mm -hmm. Okay, the nice person I talked to at Verizon, she was nice, uh, said at the end, uh, or you could go to a third party. Mm -hmm. Just remember that if you have problems with it, we may not be able to help you. Right. Uh, I understood that. But she offered third party. Mm -hmm. And we have Verizon, our um, Best Buy Geek Squad. <clears throat> so if we had problems, we could get exactly. support there. Mm -hmm. right. Good. Yeah. Okay. Like Thank you for the input. <laughs> for, for those that want to know, a modem is a device that connects your home to the internet service through a physical connection. So if you think back to like dial up, it would be kind of like that. Um and then um, a router connects the device to the local network, which is what, you know, the internet is. So the router connects to the modem and then connects us to the, the devices. So um, a lot of times now they're built in in one unit. You know, 20 years ago, they were two devices or 10 years ago. Um, and a lot of times third party stuff sometimes still can be two different things but typically now they're one device that does yeah work. i was just going to say if your if your modem has a, a lot of years on it also you might want to look into getting a combined unit for like a hundred and a half you've got one unit to deal with that's compatible with verizon and you know you've updated to the most current technology and uh you're good to go for another five or more years for a hundred and a quarter, a hundred and a half. And maybe they'll even have them on sale at the time, whenever you're there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you're, you're in good shape for quite a while. I feel like a lot of times when people have problems, it's when they have two devices versus one device, because the two devices aren't speaking together, especially if they're third party devices, like one's, two different brands one for modem and one for a router so yeah, you know, we, we don't, don't have, have a 
router. Yeah, we, we just have the one device. Mm -hmm. But if we get a third party that's one device doing both, we would be, should be okay. Mm -hmm. Should be. Actually, Lynn, I'm one of those people that still has two devices and they seem to be working just fine together. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> but I've had, I've had no issues with them. I mean, and I got them both at Best Buy. I bought them at the same time. Uh, they're both probably both uh, old enough that back then they weren't pushing a, a one device unit. They had a few, but they they still had a lot of in two individual pieces, mm -hmm. which is what I ended up getting. And I, gosh, I don't think I paid more than a hundred and a quarter for both of them, hundred and a half maybe. If if it's not broken, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. Well, there's always that. <laughs> <laughs> you when also I connect to Wi-Fi in the house here, does that connect? Is the modem the thing that offers that Wi-Fi? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they are built in together. Yeah, then beam it to you. So. But you also want to double check uh, how you're getting internet through your um, home because there's uh, a lot, the old models were coax cables um, that were plugged into the wall and they've, uh, Verizon has now transitioned people to ethernet ports. Yeah. And that's when I got my new router is when they had to upgrade to the, the ethernet. So mm -hmm. make sure you you know when you look on the back of your current modem slash router, um, is it a coax port that you need to connect into, or is it a Ethernet? Yeah, we have optical waveguide up into our closet, and then from there is a coax that goes to the wall outlet. Mm -hmm. My Verizon does both, and yes. I have to get one that way because in this old house. It's going to be a major project replacing the coax with Ethernet. Unless I want to put the modem down the basement right next to the bridge. Mm. Yeah. And then I don't think my Wi-Fi is going to be as effective because it'll be kind of down in the basement. Mm -hmm. Or they're away. Well, my router and modem are down in the basement too, but I have a a Wi-Fi extender uh, on the first floor, and that seems to cover the rest of the house without any problems. Yeah, I had to do that for the porch. <laughs> and maybe that would work for the rest of the house if I move everything. Mm -hmm. But I also have a phone booster because we have almost no phone service in this valley. Mm. <laughs> so I'd, I'm not sure how that would work. And it has to be accessible to satellite. Mm -hmm. It gets complicated. I see. <laughs> and that's why I said if it's not broken, don't fix it. It's just yeah. alone. Mm -hmm. And I think also a factor for, for you is how thick are your walls? If it's an old house and the walls yeah. are mm -hmm. thick. Yeah, it's that's going true. To... The house is like a telescope. It's two feet thick at the base and it's about one foot thick at the top. Mm -hmm. and it's, the floor joists are laid into each step. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, the thicker the stuff, the slower it's going to yeah. take. Not easy. Uh, Lynn, you've probably done this before, but could you review how the host sets up a Zoom conference call? Of course. Happy to. <laughs> it's always good to review things because sometimes it changes. So there are two ways you can do that. You can either do it through the app that you've downloaded. Um, I don't know if you've ever opened the Zoom app. It, for whatever reason, it doesn't let me show you what it looks like. Um, let me see if I can find a photo. Zoom's like, well, of course you don't want to show this because it's Zoom and you're already in a Zoom meeting. So give me a second and I'll find um, a 
screenshot of it. Maybe. Zoom. Nope. Ah, Zoom meeting. Here we go. Hmm. Nope. Uh, hmm. Sort of. Aha. Uh -huh. Nope. That's screen share. Of course. course nope okay be that way um well this is a one way to do it there's an easier way but i'll try to do Um, okay, so if you, maybe, are you seeing, oops, where'd it go? I did instantaneously. <laughs> right. Yeah. You, are you seeing? this zoom thing that says my personal meeting id yes. yes okay so one way you can do this is if you're in your meeting section hit that little plus arrow if you're in that home screen which i don't have a photo of um you'll have four four images um there it is yeah. this do you see do yep. you see the mm -hmm. white box yep oh sweet it doesn't always show that um Right here, it's go to meeting. Uh, actually, you know what? I lie. Schedule. So if you hit this schedule meeting, you're going to get a pop-up that looks like this. Um, and you can fill out the, you know, name, the date. If it's a reoccurring meeting, um, if you want a password or if you want a waiting room. Um, you can even change the password if you want to. Um, and then you can hit schedule and you're good to go. Um, and then you can just paste that information. If you hit the copy meeting ID and then you just paste that into the email that you want to send to folks and it will look like that. Am I going too quickly, David? Does that make uh, sense? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how we first got there. So have you- I have seen that before though. Have you opened a Zoom meeting and you see this little white box right uh, here, this thing? Yes. Do you have a schedule button? Uh, probably. I guess. So if you hit that schedule button. That's the way you set it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad it's letting you see this, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> They've changed stuff. That's so impressive. So yeah. Then you can pick, you know, what time. Dates, times. Re if it's a reoccurring meeting and if it's weekly, monthly. Um. And if it ends after seven occurrences or in March or whatever. And um, then you put in the attendees. Uh, so there's a two-step process. Um, mm -hmm. What you can do is once you save your meeting, um, you'll see it under this meeting tab. Um, go away. Um, right here, Lynn's Zoom meeting. 
and you want to copy that invitation. And then what you would do is then email that to your group of people, right? So you'd be like, um, okay, you know, whoever, mm -hmm. Zoom meeting. And then you just paste that information in. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Okay. Am I going too fast? Yell at me if I'm going too fast. <laughs> Proof is in the pudding. Uh, mm -hmm. The other way to do that um, is through the browser. So I don't know if you want me to show you that or not, but yes, if please. Happy... Yes, please. Okay. So I don't want to confuse you if you're like, I just want to learn one way. So you go to the Zoom website, which is zoom.us. And you go to my account. So if you have a Zoom account, you should be all set. If you don't have a Zoom account yet, it would be good to make one. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just go to the meetings tab over here. And then you hit schedule a meeting. This is typically how I schedule meetings because I find it easier. And you can do tests or whatever. And you want it for, you know, 3.30 p.m. or whatever. If it's a reoccurring. Um, and then waiting room or passcode. Or if you want both. And then just hit save. And just like the other one, here's that copy the link to send to folks. Um and you're all set. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So yeah, whichever is easiest for you. Everybody likes to do different things. So if you have the paid account, mm -hmm. if you if you have the freebie account, you just get 45 minutes. Correct. For a meeting. And what I have done is just schedule back to back meetings and I I um email the links for session one and session two. So as soon as we time out, we have a little contest to see who can get in first on the <laughs> second round. That's if you have the freebie. Otherwise you're unlimited. You should be able to, if you end the meeting, if you make the meeting like continuous, like there is no meeting time, you could just use the same, just end the meeting and then relaunch the meeting. At least you used to be able to do that. I don't know if you still can. Hmm. That would be something worth trying. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have a system that works yes. out. So yeah, depending on what kind of meeting you're doing, um, it works. Thank you. Good question. Sometime I'll have to have you guys make a Zoom meeting and we for tech time and we confuse everyone. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why not? For kicks and giggles. Right. <laughs> right. Yep. Make us know how incompetent we are. <laughs> <laughs> We're all incompetent on different things. So. Back during the pandemic, Shirley and Bev and I did a Zoom Christmas present exchange uh, because we couldn't get together for the holidays. And mm -hmm. I have a free account. But it didn't kick us off after 45 minutes. We Maybe it was because they were being nice on Christmas Day. but we, I think we that's heard. what it was. I think yeah. we discovered that that's what it was. We had like two and a half hours uh, <laughs> that we were on this, this Zoom meeting, opening an ex our Christmas presents, and uh, no problems. It was it was fun. Easy to set up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real, real easy. That was something that Zoom advertised in 2020 that 
on Thanksgiving and Christmas, mm -hmm. they would do unlimited time so that people could be together. Um, Miss, missed which, that memo, but we took care, took advantage of it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so I don't think that's continuing to happen on Thanksgiving. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice when they did. But that was my first time setting up a meeting and you know, it was very simple. I, you know, had no real problems doing it at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The if you're hosting the meeting too, um, and you've never hosted before, if you do a waiting room, you're going to have to admit people um, to the meeting. So I don't know if you've ever done that before, but. If you're not paying attention, you could we didn't have do that. people stuck in <laughs> cyberspace. When you're setting it up, you have to opt out of that if you don't mm -hmm. want to mm -hmm. click off the little, it's already clicked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you have the power to mute and unmute people if uh, that's something you need to do. Right. I, I have a, a question. I'm, I'm not sure um, if there's a, a way to control Windows opening when you start up. I remember there used to be a a file back in Windows 95 days where you could go and, and uh, determine what Windows start when you start up the computer mm -hmm. and what have you. But Every time I get a new version or I have an update, it seems that Microsoft is starting up something else. And it's usually a promotion of some sort, mm -hmm. or it may be news tied in with the promotion, but it's a page full of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what control I have over that. Mm -hmm. I think you can still do that if you do right click the application. I know Mac still has that option. So we could look at, if somebody wants to screen share a PC, we could look and see if that's still a thing, but. Well, this isn't a Mac. Oh, on a Mac? I can show you how to do it on a Mac. No, this is a Windows. It's a um, right. laptop. Mm. Yeah. Would that be on my iPad? The same thing as your. iPad, I think is different because all the apps it's not like you open apps at the start when you turn them all on. It's not like you can have it directly open to your email, say. Yeah. Um, it's wherever you leave off. So if you leave off in an app, it should restore it from there. Well, with, with AOL, you get all sorts of stuff when you try to get into your mail. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, you actually have to... Um, go from the opening screen into the mail thing and it's, you know, several clicks across. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I guess the price you pay for a free email service. Do you, um, you is, is this on your iPad or is this on the web? It's, um, it's, it's a similar thing, but it's a little, uh, with the um, iPad, it's the uh, mail, it's the AOL. Mm -hmm. With Windows, it's just a general mm -hmm. thing. Because if you, instead of going through the browser on the iPad, you could use the mail app. Right. And then you don't have to go through multiple steps. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't used it. I haven't used the mail app for a while. I've just kind of gone with the flow. And mm -hmm. uh, when Verizon dropped or turned their mail service over to AOL, um, I just went with it. Mm -hmm. um, and on the browser, you could bookmark, you know, the mm. direct email link or have that direct email link open as your like homepage every time you open that browser. So that's okay, how we that's decide, idea. Subs, yeah, avoid some of those processes. Everything free 
it has a price these days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope you have an ad blocker on your browser too, because AOL likes to have all their ads. Yeah. What ad blocker are you recommending these days? Um, I'm still using the same one I've been using. So let me see if I can find it. Um, if I can see you guys and see this. Um, there we go. So I've been using ad block, which is just an extension. Right. For any yeah. of these browsers. Yeah. Do you have the free one or are you paying? I just do the free one. Okay. I've got that. <clears throat> I've got Ghostery too. <clears throat> I don't know. I've got Ghostery. How did I find that then? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, but they're brilliant. They don't save everything, but. Yeah. <clears throat> Hmm. Be nice to get more on tablets and things. I find it hard to get those on tablets. Hmm. Hmm. But could be worse. <laughs> hmm. I'm hoping that, yeah, they don't cut us off. I've been waiting for them to work away around the ad blockers, but. They haven't yet. Any other things you guys want to talk about? Things? Questions? Going too fast or too slow? Not that I can think of. <laughs> It's a quiet day in the neighborhood. Yeah. Get you guys all tech savvy. <laughs> you added an app. Well, maybe you haven't all added an ad blocker and want to see how to do that. But yeah, everybody's. It could be like the man that knew more and more about less and less until he knew nothing at all. <laughs> I have sort of forgotten about VPN and what that is and how it's used and how important it is to use that. Obviously, I don't haven't installed it. Yeah, virtual private. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. It's a nice idea, but yeah, I don't want to pay for it. So I haven't done it myself. So VPN stands for virtual private network. Yeah. And what it does is it makes your Wi-Fi like uh, encrypted in a way that people won't be able to find where you are. So if you're doing illegal things and um, the government wants to hunt you down, this virtual <laughs> private network might say you're in China or Africa or California. So... Um, it makes it harder to identify, but it also um, gives you more encryption if there are hackers trying to come in and get onto your system. Um, so like anything, right? It's good to have, it's an extra step of security. Um, is it necessary for the common person? Eh, but, um, yeah, and there's different companies that, you know, offer it for a fee. There are some free ones, but I always am skeptical of the free ones. Um, yeah, because I'm check, check with Nancy J when she gets back from Guatemala. I think she she has it and uses it, so she can mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. tell you the goods and the bads. I have it on my phone mm -hmm. because I'm through Verizon, and mm -hmm. I carry the insurance when I bought. My new phone, I carry the insurance on it, and it's mm -hmm. part of that package deal. So I get it free as because I carry the insurance, so it's all rolled into one. Yeah. So I just do most of my Google searching now on my phone versus my computer. 
or my iPad because mm -hmm. I know it's more protected. Mm -hmm. So okay. if anybody has their phones through Verizon and has the insurance plan, you may want to uh, check into that because it's a free service. Right. Mm -hmm. You could see bells when you go to Best Buy to, you know, get a new router. Um, <laughs> you could ask them if that's included or, an, you know, something else. But um, I know Dan Wilcox uses NumLock or LifeLock or whatever. Oh, LifeLock. LifeLock, yeah. LifeLock, yeah. LifeLock um, as his VPN. So if you have that, they're sometimes built in um, to that. Um, and Stephen, I think it uses a vast VPN. Um, uses what? A vast VPN. So there's lots of different ones on the market. He um, uses a bunch of different parts from a vast mm -hmm. and, and seems to be very happy with them from what he's said. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. And a lot of browsers have them built into their browsers now that, you know, while you're using X, use our VPN. So yeah. um, I'm currently using Brave as my, um, as my um, <laughs> browser. And you can see it's up here, right? Get started with um, the VPN. So mm -hmm. You'll see that sometimes in different browsers, too. I'm a little hesitant to try Bravo. I, I downloaded it, mm -hmm. but I've heard that one of the reasons it's good is that it's very private. And because it's very private, a lot of the um, very conservative, um, I don't know what groups are using it, and the choices, when you search for something, the choices are based on popularity of, mm -hmm. of um, checking them out. And you don't always get the, the links that you would like. Mm -hmm. Are you talking Bravo or Brave? Um, which was there... Brave? Which was the one that you had? Is that Brave? Yeah, Brave. Lynn and I do. Brave. Yeah, Brave. That was it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brave is a browser, so you're not searching through the search engine with it. They have one, but I haven't been using their search engine. Um, but the the so it's a very secure browser focused. What frustrates me about Brave, but it's also a good thing, is it makes you auto log in to websites all the time with your passwords because it doesn't want you to remember it um but that's a security level pro but convenience level so you decide that DuckDuckGo is a search engine that is notorious for um very right-wing conservative theorist type things which is a uh. search engine that as you said um it doesn't focus necessarily on the you know most credible and reliable news it's the most trafficked um you know um information so a lot of times it's misleading or um mm -hmm. information versus credible or um trustworthy um stuff um, i got rid of duck duck go and went to brave mm -hmm. fine yeah. And there's an extension. I'm can I remember what it is now? Um that is also helps with um I know we've talked about it before in here. Um that kind of gives you a, a credible rating on is this a trustworthy source of information to help you and it rates all these different websites on right how and the information is is it you know a 20 percent is it an 80 percent um credible source can i remember what that extension is but no i know there was a fee for it 
Um, um, but all good things, but things to think about, right? Each search engine, which is where you search for information online, is focused on different things, right? Where like Google, it's more advertisement based. So they bring things that people are paying higher. Um, um, yeah, so there are pros and cons to every browser. Um, but I'll have to look into what that Um, extension was. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh, well. So anyway, well, I try to find that. Um, Any questions? Why? Mm -mm. <laughs> Why? It's good. Well, maybe we should just move on. Right. It's like a Quaker meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those. <laughs>